Hey YouTube, Marilyn here again. So for today's video, we're going to have a look inside the white van sub. It's the Jorg Wagner XJM 2580. We're going to take out this woofer for the first thing and have a look behind there. They're not very long screws, so it doesn't take very long for it to get out. If you like the video, drop a comment below, subscribe, like and share this video. Now uh, let's take it out and have a look. Let's see what we're dealing with behind here. It's not a half bad woofer, it does pretty decent excursion. So I'm expecting something half decent from it. Oh, here we go. Let's cut some cables. I'm going to cut them too long and too short, otherwise, I don't know where they go. By the looks of it, it's a dual voice for a woofer, though. It does look dual voice for well, here we go. There's the woofer. Looks like a one inch voice squeal. It's a dual voice squeal. It's not too bad looking actually. It's more than I expected for a white van sub. <laughs> so the wood's about 15 mil. So it's not too bad. It's not exactly the greatest of quality. It's better than shipboard though. Also, this comes off. Alright, All right, let's have a look at the amplifier. So we've got the back. Of course it says what it is, blah blah blah. No outrageous power figures or anything, it just says 65 watt sub and 5 by 15 for the speaker outs. Now we'll take this out. I'll pause it and get back when I've got all the screws out. Alright, here we go. Screws are out. Take out this, and here we go. Here's the amplifier board. We'll get a closer in shot of this. All right. So at the top here, we have the power supply, and that's a uh, switch mode power supply. That's pretty cool. Didn't expect that. Now we got there. Okay, so that's power in, it's heat shrinked, and heat shrinked again, not too much glue, it's going straight up here, uh, going into a relay, by the looks of it, it's actually decently built, all in all, what have we got, there's the bridge rectifier, so we've got filter caps, we've got a relay, the primary filter capacitor, or secondary filter cap, and that's pretty cool, alright, let's have a look at the amplifier board a little bit closer, so we have, what have we got down here? We've got a Nouveau Ton. See if you can see that. I've, I don't know that brand, but I've seen it in white van amplifiers before. So let's have a look at these power ICs. Alright, hang on a moment, let's get a closer look. So they're TDA 7379. I've heard that before, and they're made by ST Electronics. Okay, well, I've heard of those before. I'm pretty sure they're the same ICs that are in my Bose lifestyle system. They're 15 watt by 2 and 28 watts by 1, I believe. So, yes, I do believe this is actually uh, left and right for subwoofer, so it's not a mono sub. Let's look at the traces underneath here and we can have a better look. Right, so these are the traces here. These are the outputs. So we got one, the other one's going over here. So that one there. And we got ground. So yeah, it is using the other one. Yep, it's using the mono section of each chip. Huh. Did not expect that. So it is running in stereo for the subwoofer. That's not too bad. The solder joints aren't too bad on it, actually. It's quite cleanly set up. I've seen much worse. I mean, these solder joints up here are not too brilliant. Any power left in these caps? Nah, they're fully discharged. These are the speaker outputs. So that one there is driving the center speaker. It's going up to there. 
Yep. So sub rears, sub front, center speaker. So yeah, okay. The heat sink's not greatly big, uh, but I've run it pretty hard and it doesn't seem to overheat. So now where's the pre-amplifier stage? What have we got over here? I don't know what that chip is, but we've got two differential amplifiers in here. Let's see if I can get some of these cables out of the way and we'll snip this. Should have bought real snippers with me. This is not going to be there. Don't judge my skills. I've packed everything away to move to the new house. <laughs> So yes, over here, you can see it, those there are the differential amplifiers, that keeps a, a stable, oh, that's different, so they're feeding directly into these, so we got from the pre, preamp differential to those, that's the display and uh, controller, regulators, only one capacitor for the mains. Hmm. Well, didn't expect that. But everything's... There's some hot snot down here, but... Hot snot around each one of these, but I mean, it's not overly... Not an overall huge amount of hot snot. It's actually really quite neat. Hmm. I'm actually quite impressed. These wires are decently thick enough. Hmm, this is, I mean, it's lacking optical or anything, and it does claim it has 5.1, but the only way you can get 5.1 is by going off the, uh, the inputs down here. So we're looking at here, and yeah, they're feeding straight into there and into the pre. Yeah, the only 5.1 inputs it has are from... The AC3 here doesn't have optical or anything like it claims. But I mean, it's. For a budget home theater amplifier, it's it's actually pretty decent. It's it's not half that bad. Um, I'm quite shocked. I expected it to be a lot worse than this. The fact that it's got a uh, switch mode power supply and everything on it is. Uh, yeah, hell of a step up. It claims to be 180 watts power consumption. Yeah. I could believe that. Yeah. At least the power wires going directly from here are actually, you know, not just a ribbon cable, they're quite nice and thick. Does it say how many volts it is? No, it does not. Oh no, okay. So we got plus minus 15 here and 38 volts here. So these chips will be run pretty hard. I can still get it to clip on a high level. So we'll move the amp out of the way. So it's not overly that badly built. I'm a bit closer look at this box. Yep, your eyes are not deceiving you. There's a brace in there. There's a lot of glue in here. They went ape shit with glue. But yeah, it's all polyfilled. Yeah, <laughs> you've used sticker flex, but yeah, it's in there. Ports over here. It's uh, glued in there. I actually re glued the port because <laughs> it was coming loose. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's not too badly built. It's, yeah, it's about 15 mil wood all around, 10, 10 DF. So yeah, it's not too bad. At least this is sealed. Uh, yeah, I haven't got too many complaints about this. It doesn't look too bad. It's not bad. Yeah, for a white van speaker, anyway. I'm gonna check out that. <laughs> That's coming up. Well, there we go. There's your woofer. There's your amplifier. Yeah. If you can pick one of these up relatively cheap, I say go for it. I mean, they're not that badly built, even if you just want a woofer. It's not bad at all.
the amp works, no problem at all. I mean, I picked it up for five bucks for the whole system, including the uh, subwoofer and speakers, so can't really go wrong for that price. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.